Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a special live coverage this morning on CHCH as we bring you Remembrance Day 2012, live here from the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum, where behind me some 2,300 people are here for the 18th year of the Remembrance Day ceremonies here. This is a, an event that has grown by leaps and bounds in the last 18 years, and we will be bringing you everything that's happening here today, commercial-free for the next hour and a half. Of course, Remembrance Day is an incredibly special day where we're, of course, remembering Canadian soldiers who sacrificed their lives over many wars and many years and it is just an incredible moment to be here to be inside the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum as we are basically inside a living breathing museum with so many aircraft. I'm going to bring in right now uh, Dave Rohr. He is the CEO and President of the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum. Dave, this uh, it's incredible feeling just to be here today to be watching the setup over the last hour and a half or so. Tell me a bit about what's going through your mind right now. Well, it certainly is, Nick. This is a very special day, probably the most important day in the museum. And all the work and all the effort that have gone in to make this ceremony perfect for everyone is very important for us. And uh, we're honoured to be able to host this in the city of Hamilton and for our local community. This, I understand, has become the second largest uh, event, the Remembrance Day event, in Canada. That is an incredible feat for you to achieve that because, as you were telling me earlier, this started very small. We started very small, very humble beginning. Mm -hmm. 74 people at our first remembrance service 18 years ago. And each successive year since, it has grown in scope and dimension. And now, I believe, we're the largest, second largest in the country. I think we should also mention, too, that uh, this is open to everybody, right? There are 2,300 seats here, but it's standing room only. If you want to come and show up, people can still come and, and be here and participate, right? Absolutely. We have tw uh, seating for 22 to 2,300 people. We have standing room for another 1,000. And uh, we will have lunch afterwards. Uh, we invite the whole community to come and honor our veterans. Can you give us a sense of some of what we're going to be seeing uh, throughout the ceremony today as well? Well, we're going to see the psalm uh, part of the ceremony, uh, the laying of wreaths. We'll have greetings from the uh, our politicians, both at federal, provincial, and municipal level. We'll have Ted Barris, our guest speaker, who is a renowned author about our veteran service in Canada. We'll have a flyover uh, ending our two-minute silence, uh, which is very special. And uh, we'll have the Redeemer College, College Choir and the Salvation Army Band playing as well. There must be so much that goes into getting this all arranged. I mean, is it sort of uh, on, a, on November the 12th, you kind of start all over again? I think we're seeing right now Tim Hudak arriving today as well. Pretty much. We, we will start planning a couple of weeks down the road for next year, and each year we try to add something that we didn't do last year to make it a little more special, a little more meaningful. And I understand that this year as well, because of how much this has grown, that you've actually moved some more of the planes outside onto the tarmac because there's so much demand for people to be here. Yes, we did. Uh, we have the three airplanes that are very... the. Harvard, which was a central airplane in the British Commonwealth Air Training Program and uh, stationed all through Ontario and Canada. And it gave us an extra 70 feet by having the trainers and the fighters instead of the large transporter heavy bomber aircraft. Right. It's incredible to think that of what happens here at this museum on a day-to-day -day basis, but like you said, this truly is the biggest day in the museum every single year. And when you look out and you see all these people wearing their poppies over their hearts, you see the veterans, you see the current soldiers, it really is amazing, isn't it? It must really just make you feel special. It makes us feel privileged to be able to host this event and to honor our veterans in this way, with, because every day here is Remembrance Day, but yeah. this day is especially uh, a very key day in our calendar. Absolutely. Now, one of the other things I suppose we should get into as well is that this is going for the next hour and a half commercial free here on CHCH. So if you're watching right now, uh, don't tune out because you, you, you'll miss something special. And certainly around 11 o'clock, things will get uh, incredibly somber and special as well, right? It'll be very special. And I hope our uh, listeners and uh, audience will tune in for right till 12. It'll be a very special event. And we're, we're really pleased to be able to have you join us as partners in this. We couldn't do it without you. So. Well, it is, it is certainly Certainly great to be, uh, be here. I know it's our privilege, and I know this is a very important event. Uh, I understand things are going to be getting away uh, very shortly now, so uh, let's just sort of take one more look out here as we take a look uh, at these 2,300 uh, and plus. I know it's going to be standing room only. Uh, just phenomenal turnout, and it's a beautiful day outside as well. I know there are other events going around at Cenotaphs all across Canada as well, but th this really has, has something to it, doesn't it? Well, it really does, and you know, it says a lot about uh, the citizens of our community in Hamilton and how much they care and how much they remember. All right, Dave Orr, thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. I know you've got to get to the program. Uh, we are going to, again, watch Remembrance Day Ceremony 2012 starting right now.
the back. There are still plenty of seats up along the sides, and we invite you to come and find a seat and, and be comfortable. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum and this very special service of remembrance. My name is Bill McBride, and I have the honour to act as your Master of Ceremonies this morning, but I'm especially pleased to be joined by my good friend and colleague, Reverend Chuck Beaton, who will lead us in prayers and scriptures and other acts of remembrance throughout the service. I am sure that you know that throughout the year we plan and carry out a number of very important events, but this one, our annual November the 11th service of remembrance, remains our single most significant and meaningful event, and I expect it always will be. For while we are a museum of historic airplanes, we are a museum, or really a museum, about people those brave men and women who have, on so many occasions, when trouble came to the world, stepped forward to fill the breach. Many gave their all, and today we will remember them. To begin the program, I will ask you to please stand for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for our national anthem. Color Party, march on the colors. Gentlemen, please remain standing for our national anthem. Please be seated. Yeah. 
Hi, Karen. Can you hear me? I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you could see what I can see from this vantage point, I don't think there can be anybody left in the city of Hamilton. You're all here, and that's wonderful. <laughs> to begin our program, I'm pleased to introduce the man who is in charge of Canadian warplane heritage, who is himself a military veteran who served many years in Canada's Air Force. He retired with the rank of major and was awarded the CD for his service. He's a former fighter pilot. He's our CEO and our president, Mr. Dave Rohr. Good morning, and thank you. I would like to say on behalf of our Chairman of the Board, Mr. Bill Coyle, who is with us this morning, the Board of Directors, our members, our staff members, and our volunteers and supporters, the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum is delighted to have you all join us today in remembering our veterans and those who still serve today in places far away at the call of their country. The poppy has its origin going back to the Napoleonic era, when a writer at that time noticed a poppies growing on the graves of the fallen soldiers. And in the Battle of Ypres in 1915, when poppies were observed growing on graves of fallen at that time, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel John McCrae wrote the famous poem in Flanders Fields. But why do we wear a poppy today? There's a poem by Don Crawford that answers that question, and I'd like to read that to you this morning. Please wear a poppy, the lady said, and held one forth, but I shook my head. Then I stopped and watched as she offered them there. Her face was old and lined with care, but beneath the scars the years had made, there remained a smile that refused to fade. A boy came whistling down the street bouncing along on carefree feet. His smile was full of joy and fun. Lady, he said, may I have one? When she pinned it on, he turned to say, why do we wear a poppy today? The lady smiled and in her wistful way answered, this is Remembrance Day. And the poppy there is a symbol for the gallant men and women who fought and died in war. And because they did, you see, we are free, and that's why we wear a poppy, you see. I had a boy about your size, with golden hair and big blue eyes. He loved to play and jump and shout. Free as a bird, he would prance about. As the years went by, he learned and he grew, and he became a man, as you will too. He was a fine and strong young man with a boyish smile, but he seemed with us such a short while when war broke out, he went away, and I can still remember his face that day when he smiled and he said, goodbye, Mom, I'll be back soon, so please don't cry. But the war went on and on, and he had to stay, and all I could do was wait and pray. His letters told of the awful fight. I can still see it in my dreams at night, with the tanks and the guns and the cruel barbed wire, the mines and the bullets and the bombs and the fire till at last, at last, the war was won. And that's why we were a poppy, my son. The small boy turned as if to go, and then said, thanks, lady, I'm glad to know. But your son, did he come back all right? A tear rolled down each faded cheek. She shook her head but didn't speak. And I slunk away in a sort of a shame. And if you were me, you had done the same. For our thanks and giving is oft delayed, though our freedom was bought and the thousands paid. And so when you see a poppy worn, let us reflect on the burdens borne by those who gave their very all when they, asked, when they were asked to answer their country's call. 
that we at home in peace might live. So wear a poppy, remember, and please give. Thank you.